Hey kids, welcome back to our Sparks Council time this week. Today we are going to have a short lesson on promises. Now I'm sure all of you have made promises at some point. I know all of us I'm sure have heard a promise being made to us. And if you think about it, do all of those promises get kept? I know that I have had promises made to me that have not gotten kept. And I've made promises that I have not kept. But you know, there is somebody who always keeps his promises. And I'll bet that most of you are shouting out right now who that is. And that is God. If you said God always keeps his promises, you are absolutely correct. And the verse that tells us that, well, there's many verses in the Bible that tell us that, but in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the Bible says, the grass withers, right? We've all seen that in the summertime. The grass withers. It doesn't last. The flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. The word of our God will stand forever. And you know, those words are so powerful that many of the, several of the other authors in the Bible actually used those words in their books. Chase memorized from his Sparks book um, a couple of weeks ago, I think, the very same verse. It says, but the word of the Lord endures forever, which means it lasts or it stands forever. And that was quoted from 1 Peter 1.25. When Peter wrote down his book, he knew these words and he used them. They are powerful words that remind us that God always keeps his promises. Now for our lesson today, we're going to be hearing about our friend Abraham again. The last two lessons have had Abraham in it. But we can learn an awful lot from Abraham. He was an incredible man and God chose him for a very, very incredible purpose. And I'm going to read you that story out of, um, this is called the Jesus Storybook Bible. So this story comes right out of the Bible. It's a true story that happened to Abraham. This actually happened to Abraham. And we can believe that that is true because it comes from God's word. But this, this book here takes that story and writes it in, in um, little bit different words that, are, that make it a little bit more story-like. And so I'm going to read to you um, about Abraham. And this is from Genesis, well, anywhere from Genesis 12 to 21. It was quite a few chapters. But after Noah had landed and then there was the Tower of Babel and God spread all the people around, this is what the Bible says. Years had passed and things didn't get any better. That means that people were still doing wrong. People were still just as cruel and mean to one another. They still got sick and died. God's world was still full of tears. It was never meant to be like this. But God was getting ready to do something about it. He was going to make all the wrong things right and he was going to do it through a family. Abraham, God said, how many stars are there? God was about to tell his friend a wonderful secret. Let me see, Abraham said, rolling up his sleeves. But have you ever tried counting the stars? Then you know how hard it is. 993, 994, 997, Oh, no, that's not right. Wait, one, two, three. Of course, he kept losing count. Too many, he said. There's a picture of our friend Abraham trying to count the stars. That's a pretty impossible job. Guess what? God laughed. I will give you so many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. You won't be able to count them either. Abraham couldn't help giggling at such a wonderful idea, but he stopped himself. How could he have a family? Don't be silly. He didn't have any children at all, let alone grandchildren. He wiped away a tear. Anyway, it was far too late for him to start having babies at his age. He was 99 years old. 
What could God mean? Abraham, God said, believe me. And then God told Abraham his secret rescue plan. Abraham, I will make your family very big, God promised, until one day your family will come to number even more than all of the stars in the sky. Abraham looked up at the dark night sky, thick with stars. You will be my special family, my people, and through you, everyone on earth will be blessed. There's God's promise. It was an incredible promise. God was going to rescue the whole world through Abraham's family, which he didn't even have yet. One of his great, great, great grandchildren would be the child, the promised one, the rescuer. But it's too wonderful, Abraham said. How can it be true? Is anything too good to be true, God asked. Is anything too wonderful for me? So Abraham trusted what God said more than what his eyes could see, and he believed. Now when Abraham's wife, Sarah, heard God's promise, she just laughed to herself. But it wasn't a happy laugh. It had tears in it. She'd always wanted a baby. Could her dream come true? Could she really have a baby when she was 90 years old? No, of course not. Don't be silly. It was far too late. Sarah didn't believe God could do something that he... Sarah didn't believe God could do what he promised. She had forgotten, though, that when God says something, it's as good as done. Of course, it was easy for God to give her a baby son as, as it was for him to make all the stars in the sky. And sure enough, the next year, just as God had promised, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy and they named him Isaac, which means son of laughter. And Sarah laughed, but this time it was a glorious, happy laugh. Her dream had come true. God would do as he promised. He would always look after Abraham's family, his special people. And one day, God would send another baby, a baby promised to a girl who didn't even have a husband. But this baby would bring laughter to the whole world. And this baby would be everyone's dream come true. Does anybody know who that baby would be? If you said Jesus, you're absolutely right. There is our Abraham and Sarah and their little baby, Isaac, that God promised to them. They were already the age of our grandmas and grandpas, and yet God promised that a baby would come to them, that he would send his special rescuer, Jesus, through their family, not some other family. This was the family God chose. And when God chooses and makes a promise, he keeps his promise. And so there is the promised baby Isaac. Now, like I said, we sometimes don't keep our promises. And you know, the Bible tells us in those chapters in Genesis that even though Abraham did believe God, they, Abraham and Sarah did try to do things their own way because it took a long time for God's promise to come true. And we might be tempted to say, you know what, they didn't really deserve God's promise because they tried to do things their own way. They and Sarah didn't even believe him. But that's not the point. When God promises something, God keeps it. And it didn't matter really the fact that Sarah didn't believe. God had still promised and he was going to do it. And next week, we're going to talk about grace and what God's grace looks like, because God has a lot of grace. We can learn that from this story as well. And we're going to talk next week about God's grace. Grace means that God doesn't give us what we deserve. And we might have thought that Abraham and Sarah didn't deserve to have that promise kept through them, to have the rescuer come through their family. But it was because God said it was going to happen. It did. And so I hope that when you guys... Think about a promise, about who you can trust. I hope that you think about God.
because God can truly be trusted because he always keeps his word. And so I hope you guys have a great week this week, and I look forward to talking again with you next week. See you later.